So now we've gone through your your bass club history. So exactly, and then you went to the state championship. Where where did uh, how did you hear about bass? Ray Scott, those guys. He came to town. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, you, you didn't hear about Ray. Ray Ray made sure you you heard about him. A uh, bunch of our bass club guys said, "Hey, Bill Dance and uh, and." Uh, I don't know if Roland, I think it may have been John Powell and, and some other guys were coming to Houston to give a, a seminar. And I kept saying, were well, you guys going to go? And they, and they said, no, no, I ain't going to go, I ain't going to go. And, and, you know, fish, bass fishermen are very uh, jealous and they didn't, they, they, and anyway, to make a long story short, I, I went and there, all the rest of them were there too. They just didn't want you to know they were going. You know, they, they didn't, they, they didn't look, I don't want to let Bill Dance tell me how to fish and all that. So that's when I kind of became aware of them. They came to Houston on that raid at that bus seminar trip through the south and going and stopping the cities to promote bass. And, and was it long after that that you fished your first bass tournament or? I, uh, Did you wait for them to come to town? No, I, uh, it, 1974, you know, that this all, all this was probably a couple of years earlier. I was working for Exxon Oil Company in the second largest computing center in the world. At that time, NASA was the only one bigger. I had a good job. I, I hated rush hour traffic and I hated working in a, in a big building. I loved systems and computing work. But uh, anyway, I just, it just finally dawned on me that, you know, hey, you know, I've got to try this and, uh, and, uh, Again, I didn't rehearse that very well because I didn't have that much money left in the bank. Fortunately, me and my wife, first wife, Jerry, kept her job at Tenneco. And I tried to start a guide service on Lake Conroe because nobody knew who you were. Conroe was only two years old. And, uh, and so you didn't get many customers. First few called me never showed up, so that didn't help, that hurt. But anyway, uh, and so I started to death for those first two years. I, but I made the classic. And in fact, I've only spent three years in my career that I didn't make money on the tournament side. It was the first two years and then last year. And uh, uh, in the first two, for, of course, in the early days, you didn't win one, you ain't gonna make any money. So, uh, and so I went pretty much completely broke and lost my house and uh, came home uh, literally to your wife and your, your oldest daughter, Brooke, which was only like two sitting on the porch and kind of locked out. And so we ended up renting a rent house on the lake for $125 a month, which was probably the best thing that happened to me. And, uh, and then uh, the thing that scared me was that when I quit Exxon, I told myself, you know, I'd give it three years. Back when I was in college, they, all business administration said, you gotta give any business three years and then evaluate it. And that's what I told myself, well, if I don't do it in three years, I'm gonna go back to systems and computing work. And, but I, at my lowest, level financially at that point in time, I knew that was a lie, that I would never go back. So I had to make this work, because I wasn't going back. It just wasn't going to do it. No, well, let's take a little sidetrack there, because we were talking earlier about guys that we've known in this sport who come into the sport and they they have a bunch of money and, and they're just doing it for their ego. Uh, and, I, and, and they don't ever seem to go very far. But the guys like yourself, I mean, you can go back and you can look at some of these guys. They, you know, they were hungry. They were hungry to learn. They were hungry to catch fish. They were hungry to succeed. And, and uh, you know, I saw, I see that in you. I saw that in, in Larry Nixon, in some ways, Denny Brower, and uh, a few others that, that even today, I mean, you know, Brandon Palahniuk slept in his truck, you know, two years ago, which was, what you did as well. I mean, is that is that a, an integral part of becoming a great tournament angler on the Elite Series? Well, it's it's inter integral part in realizing if your passion's real. Because I, I see a lot of passion, and, it, and passion exists at different levels. But when you're at rock bottom, and that passion is just as, as strong, in some cases, in my case, even got stronger, then, then I knew I was doing the right thing. Did I know that I was going to succeed? No, but I knew that I was doing the right thing for Rick Klein at that time. And, uh, and that, that, you know, so. How hard was that with, uh, you know, I knew Jerry uh, back in, uh, not too much longer after that, and saw Brooke grow up. How, how hard was that for, for the three of y'all? It was hard, but and, and to Jerry's credit, uh, she, she, she never said a negative word about it. Now, <laughs> go back in time, 
when I joined that bass club and I'd be off fishing every weekend, I had, had a regular job. Boy, I, 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 me and Randy, we, if I didn't do good in the club, in the club would all leave and go home on Sunday evening. Me and Randy go back out and fish, fish until dark or at night, and I wouldn't call her and let her know. And I'd come home four or five hours later, and she expected me. And I always sent Randy through the door first because I knew that she's going to be throwing something. <laughs> but and she hated. She literally hated fishing. And it took me a while. And when I finally, I really dreaded the day that I was going to tell her I was going to quit Exxon and go fishing full time because I thought she was going to probably kill me. And uh, but she never said a negative word and she from that point on never said a negative word and it's when it realized on me it wasn't fishing she hated it was the time that she wasn't getting fishing was my mistress okay mm -hmm. now when i made it my job my occupation now my time was hers mm -hmm. and so uh and then so she yeah she fully supported me and uh, uh and it was tough. I mean, like I said, she kept her job. She'd get up in the morning, carpool in, and, and that's about the only money we had to, to pay bills. And then I'd have a little bit to go to a tournament. I had one or two guide parties, which I just was barely getting those. And because I went to a lot of tournaments early in my career where I had enough to get there, but if I didn't draw a check, I didn't have enough to get back. And one of my best stories ever was I'd made a check in Tennessee, way, way, eastern Tennessee, way across. And I made it all the way to Memphis, and I ran out of money, but I had that check. And I didn't know anybody in, in Memphis. And so I, I had this old Sears card, so I said, well, there's a Sears store. So I went in the Sears store and went up, and they wouldn't cash it. I was like, holy cow, I had to get a job to do something just to get home. And, and on the way out the door, and this is a big 10-story Sears building, I look at this person walking in, and guess who it was? Bill Dance. No, it was his hmm. wife. Okay, you're yeah. kidding. Yeah, his wife walked in and went, and she recognized me, and she got the check cash for me. The, probably the only person I even had a chance of running into that I would have known. And, uh, so, no, it was uh, it was tough. I and mean, of course, then when when I went to Classic '76, it just turned around and me. That that was the turning point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two years in, win the Classic. The third year. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and then phone rang off the wall for guiding. And the sponsors started calling, and uh, you know, it was just night and day. It just didn't that quickly, and I knew that going in. And that's why I, that's why I became. I felt like if they hadn't changed that no limit rule, I mean that off limit. If, in other words, if the classic would, would have remained a secret, I would have won a dozen of them there because nobody knew how to fish the classic. Because I, I prepared myself in every tournament like it's the Bass Masters Classic. After I fished my first one, I knew. To win the classic, I cannot fish the way you fish every other turn. And that is, everybody's going out and getting help just like they try to nowadays, and learning about the lake and pre practicing. Because the, then all of a sudden, you go to Bass Master Classic, and that's all taken away from you. You know, they're at a huge disadvantage. I fished every single tournament like it was Bass Master Classic. I had to find the fish as fast as I could by myself. And, and that's when I won the one in 76. Then I won the one in 77, almost won the one that was second in 78, was third in 79. And of course, then they slowly, and even before then, they changed that rule. But nobody was going to beat me, nobody. You know, and uh, I mean, I might have occasionally, somebody could come in and beat me, but shoot, I would have destroyed the classic records. You wouldn't have been able to touch them. But, uh, but and I understand why they went to the rule. I mean, we, I mean, we didn't have nothing but that local high school band and our relatives at the tournament, you know, back then. And uh, but now you see what we had. We we had to do that, to, to, so media would have time to come, and then the fans would have time to come. 